Good morning, my name is Kim Carlisle and we live near Sheridan, Indiana. We have a shop full of Heisey and we are open by appointment only. So if you want to come by and visit our shop sometime, all you have to do is give us a call or an email and we can set you up an appointment. Today I'm going to do something a little different. Normally we have things on here that we have for sale. Today we're going to show one of Heisey's deep plate etchings, it's called Tally Ho. So first I'm going to give you our email address. In case you see a piece of Tally Ho in your collection that we don't have in ours and you're wanting to sell it, we might be interested in buying it off of you. Again, my name's Kim Carlisle. The email address is the letter K, C-A-R-L-I-S-L at A-T-T -T dot N-E-T. Please note there's no E on the end of Carlisle. So let's get right to the Tally Ho, -ho design. First, a little bit of history about the Heise Company. Heise was founded in Newark, Ohio in 1896 and it closed in 1957. Before the Heise factory was built, Augustus Heise would come to Newark, visit the site, and he would actually live in a Warren hotel that was in downtown Newark. And even while the factory was being built and before Heise's home was being built, he and his family lived there in that hotel. While he was there at that hotel, there was a bar in the hotel, and it was called the Tally Ho Bar. And at the back of the bar was a painting of a horse and carriage with a courthouse in the background, and that painting was called Tally Ho. Well, in 1933, when the prohibition was going out, it was legal for glass companies to start making liquor-related items again, so Heise came up with this design that they call Tally Ho. The designer of it was Ray Coble. The design figures actually came from that painting in the Warren Hotel. We've got a picture of the hotel that Heise lived in. That's the Warren Hype Hotel. It's on the east side, was on the east side of Newark, tore down in the 1960s. And then the painting that was actually at the back of the bar was called the Tally Ho, and it was a Tally Ho bar. So this is where Ray Coble got his inspiration for coming up with this design. So now we're going to go back to the design again. There's a few features I want to point out on this design to you. If you look, there's a horse and carriage, and right at the front of the horse, there's a little man. He's waving down the carriage, and he has a little bag in front of him. Another design feature I want you to look at, leaving the coach and the carriage is a man with a woman. And please note that in between the man and the woman, the man has his arm out, and he's helping the woman toward the end. The third characteristic of this design is the cobblestones that are underneath everything, or the street that the horse and the carriage and the people are walking on. If you notice, there's only like three or four rows of cobblestones in the design. Now, Tally Ho was made in two different time periods, from 1933 to 1946, and then from 1949 to 1952. There's two years of production that there wasn't anything listed in any price list with Tally Ho in it. So for two years, we don't believe there was any tally homemade. So now I'd like to go through specific items that Heise made with the tally ho design. First, we have an oak wood decanter. Of course, it has your normal tally ho, has your coach, your carriage, passengers, horse, the whip, has a little man in front waving them down. And then there's the inn. It says inn and this little placard there on the building. And then there's a church steeple and a little house. Every design basically has these elements on it. Next item, we have a New Era Pilsner. Has the same designs on it. And you might also note that the little man, he has his arm out, helping the woman along. And there's a little man in front with just a few rows of cobblestone down below it. This is a Marshall decanter. It's a footed decanter. It's an unusual pattern to find with Tally Ho on it. One of the harder pieces to find. As well as a Marshall decanter, Heise made a Marshall cocktail shaker. Also has the design elements on it. If you notice on this one, there's a little man. He's got his arm holding out for the woman. However, if you look in between the horse and the end, there is no little man trying to wave them down to stop them. Now, cocktail shaker works like this. The top comes off. You put all your elements for the cocktail shaker inside. 
put the lid strainer on, you shake it up, the stopper comes out, and then when you pour it, there's a strainer on the inside to take out all your nuts and everything else you don't want to go in your drink. There are several different heads that Heise put in these. Here's a horse head, goes with the horse and carries. They also put rooster heads in these and some other heads. Now we have the four different bitters bottles that Heise put Tally Ho on. The first one's called Bradbury. Each one of them has a distinct shape. The next one is called Atkins. The next one, I have to cheat and look on the bottom, it says Robinson. And the fourth one, which is the hardest one to find in my opinion, it's actually pictured in a 1953 Heise catalog with the Saturn pattern, but it has a number on it that says 4085, which is a Corninor number. So you could truthfully say this is Saturn or Corninor, either one. And you can see the design is very small on this one. Next, we have two Whaley beer mugs. Have a large beer mug. The Whaley beer mugs are always signed on the bottom. And then a small beer mug. The next item is a bar bottle. This is a back bar bottle. Most likely you keep whiskey in one of these. It's got a full cut stopper in it. Hard to find with tally-ho decoration on it. And if you look, the, the tally-ho is really bunched up on this. Everything's close together. And they've eliminated the little man in between the inn and the horse. Probably eliminated on this to get the, because they had to make the horse and carriage and everything so big to fit on it. They probably actually didn't have room for the little man on this one. Now, here's the second piece of new era that Heise made tally-ho. It's going to be difficult to see, but there's the inn on one side. There's a man and a woman walking away from the carriage. There's a carriage. And there's a little man waving. What they've done with this one, they have actually etched the decanter like they would any other decanter. But then after they etched it and put tally-ho on it, then they dipped the whole thing in acid and frosted the entire outside of it. Very unusual design technique that they've used on this one. Now we have one of the most common pieces of tally-ho, and that is on the Coble cocktail shaker. Again, no little man in between the inn and the horse. So you think they left him out because there wasn't room. There he's got her by the arm again. In a little bit, we should run across one of these where he doesn't have her by the arm. So now we're going to go to the large two-quart cocktail shaker. Same design all the way around it. When you get to the front in between the horse and the end, there's plenty of room for that little man in between the end and the horse, but he's just not there. So really there's no rhyme or reason for why he's there. Later on, I'm gonna be showing you a cordial, which is the smallest item that they put tally-ho etching on, and the little man is in the cordial. Now we have two ice buckets. First, we have Queen Anne Ice Bucket with the dolphin feet on it. No little man up front. And this one has a bale on it. Bale that easily comes off. And then later on, when the Empress pattern was reworked, they reworked it into Queen Anne. So here's a Queen Anne Ice Bucket. The Empress pattern is smooth on the inside. The Queen Anne Ice Bucket has all these ribs on the inside of it. Again, no little man. Now, here's an hors d'oeuvre plate, and you look at it. When you look at it like this, what's unusual about it is the horse and the carriage and everything is going in the opposite direction as everything else. And that's because they put the etching on the underneath side. Here's how you normally see tally-ho, and this would be the outside of a cocktail shaker or a decanter or anything else. But you might note, no little man in front of the horse. So when it's shown like this, how most people will display it, it's actually going in the opposite direction that it normally goes. And Heise also made an eight inch Empress plate. The same effect, they put the etching on the underneath side. Here's a universal stem line. 
It just shows you all the different sizes you could get in a stem line. Here's a goblet, saucer champagne, a burgundy, a cocktail, a claret, a wine, and here's a little cordial. This is the smallest piece that I know of that they put tally-ho design on. And if you look carefully, you see the little man in front of the horse. We've got little horses and everything on here. And the man is grasping the woman's arm. Next, we have two decanters. This is a Christus decanter. It's a footed decanter. Got the man, got the woman. It's got everything on it. And if you might look, this has great detail on the roof. And this has a cut or press stopper, and this stopper actually happens to be a press stopper in it. Here's the exact same decanter, but not only do they put tally-ho on it, but they also put a cutting on it. They added a cutting around the foot, around the base. And then they put these cross hatches on the neck. And this is very similar to other high Z uh, cuttings that I've seen before with a, with a cut stopper in it. They really dress this piece up. Here's a piece that's seldom seen. It's a hollow stem saucer champagne. And all the figures seem to be spread out on this one. Here's a decanter that looks like the Christus decanter, but no foot on it. And it's called Bethel. There's just a wide range of decanters that Heisey put Tally Ho on. Here's a cocktail shaker. The only cocktail shaker that Heisey made with a metal top on it comes off. The cap comes off sometimes. Anyway, the cap's got holes in it, so you can pour your cocktail out of the top of the cap. The Revere cocktail shaker is always marked with the diamond dates in the center of the bottom of it. They also made this cocktail shaker in cobalt blue and Sahara. There's never been a piece of tally-ho ever come out in color, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. There just hasn't been a piece come out that anyone's made note of. Last decanter we have is a Gascony decanter. It's got the little man in front. Got the man and woman really crowded in to get them into this. They made three pieces in Gascony with Tally Ho. The decanter, large soda glass. And if you look at the soda glass, I think this is the first one I've come across. The man is not holding the woman's arm. The little man is in front. But there's three pieces in Gascony that they put the etching on, decanter, soda, and then here's a little wine. In this one, the man is holding the woman's arm on Gascony. Now we have some oddball pieces here that Heisey made. Here's a whiskey. The whiskey has a half a sham in the bottom of it. You can see this extra glass that's filled up there. Have another piece with a deep sham in it. See all this extra glass in the bottom? If you focus in on the old price list, right here, it'll say 50, 20, 52 bar glasses, and it says a half a sham. The reason it says a half a sham on there, a sham is just what you think it might be. A sham is where it's deceitful. That is, you're not getting what you're paying for. Like normally this glass would be all the way down here and no extra glass in it. The reason this extra glass was in there because so a bartender, he could start giving you cocktails and after you have a little bit too much to drink, he switches the cocktails and rather than giving you a full glass, he's only giving you a glass that's about three fourths full of alcohol. So he makes more money. It has a sham in it or a way to be deceitful. Here's an item that was only made for one year, rooster head cocktail with Tally Ho, only made for one year, but these seem to be pretty plentiful out there. Unusual piece to find with Tally Ho, Spanish stem, a soda glass. Again, the man and woman do not have their arms together. And there is a little man out front. Here's one of the few press pieces 
that you find with Tally Ho. It's marked in the center of the bottom. It's just a 603 tumbler. It's a very thick blank. No sham in the bottom of it. Alibi cocktail. And a very unusual piece in coronation. Little man and woman are not holding hands again. Now, if you look at this one, see the cobblestones, the very fine trail of cobblestones. And you can see where the end is, and right up above where the end starts, which means it's sitting back in the distance, is a church and a house and one tree. Church, house, and one tree, sitting back from a distance. And this is the way just about all Tally Ho is shown. Here's a Wardorf cocktail. Another piece that's a little bit hard to find with Tally Ho on it. Now, I've been showing you this Tally Ho in all the different ways it is. Now, I want to show you something different. Here's a soda glass. The things that are different about it, look at the bottom of it. Look at all the pebbles in the co cobblestones. See how thick it is? Where normally the road is only about two or three cobblestones thick, this is very thick. The man and woman is walking, are walking away. They don't have their hands together. There's a little man in front. But what's unusual about this is from this end, rather than have the church and everything right here beside it, it steps up about another half an inch and up through the sky goes the steeple and the church. And then here's decoration that's not seen on any other tally ho. You have a, like a ridge or a mountain going up. It's got trees on it, pine trees on it. And then on top of that hill are a couple other buildings. And you can see this decoration is up above this decoration. Very unusual. Pro probably just a prototype when they're experimenting with the design. Probably led to too much expense because you had not only this one etching plate to put around the bottom, but then you had to place this etching plate and another etching plate tissue up there. Now, Tally Ho's never been reproduced by any other glass companies that I know of. However, there are a few things out there that look like Tally Ho. Here's a very inexpensive tumbler, and it looks like it's got Tally Ho on it, but this is all painted on with white enamel. Somebody copied off of somebody. The little man is missing. Carriage, same amount of people are still there. The man and woman walking by the church, the house, and the tree to the end. So I hope you've learned just a little bit about Tally Ho today and uh, have any questions, you can give us a call or send us an email and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.